the most amazing show on the radio. And as promised, I have a very special guest for you. This is a real treat. We've got Alan Safier on the line with us today. Hi, Alan. Hey, Kimberly. How you doing? Oh, fantastic. How are Hi. you? I'm good. It's very sunny here today in New York after an entire day yesterday of snow. Oh. All day long. Well, let me tell you, all of our listeners are just going boo-hoo for you yeah, out I there know. in New York. <laughs> hey, I've walked down Michigan Avenue in the middle of December. <laughs> well, let's hope the weather is nice enough for you when you come to town on February 8th. Yeah. And I understand that you have been doing this show, Good Night Gracie, for nearly, how long has it been? 300-some well, performances, I've been, I've right? I've been touring with Say Good Night Gracie. This is my sixth season now. Unbelievable. So how yeah. many shows is that? Oh, gosh, I don't know. You Probably lost count. A <laughs> couple hundred, maybe. I don't know. You know what? It's, it's the best job you could ever have in the world. I mean, I get to be, I get to get inside the skin of somebody, a performer that I have admired my entire life from childhood. So you can imagine how thrilling that is. Mm, I could only imagine. I'm <laughs> wondering what inspired you and exactly how old were you the first time that your ears and eyes have met the real uh, George Burns? And tell oh me about my, that. I mean, I must have been, I, I guess I was a little kid watching the, the Burns and Allen TV show. And when Burns and Allen were on TV and even in vaudeville and, and radio and all that, you know, the, everybody would say, well, you know, Gracie is the funny one and George is just sort of like, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the straight man. And uh, he's living off of Gracie, which is sort of something that George actually perpetuated himself as part mm. of the bit. But when mm. I was a kid, I was sort of like, I was like Jack Benny. Everything that George Burns said cracked me up. I just thought he was so funny. And I really appreciated that, um, that kind of dry sense of humor he had. And uh, the thing that he called illogical logic, which is, <laughs> this, you know, the material from the act and even from some of the TV show, this was all out of his brain. This was all out of his imagination. And, and Gracie just sort of assumed this role of this dizzy character that he invented. In fact, when they first teamed up in vaudeville, he was the dizzy character and she was the straight man. And she was still getting all the laughs. One day, George said, you know what? I think that I think you're the funny one. Let's uh, let's switch roles. And almost immediately after that moment, they became superstars of vaudeville. And then, of course, radio and then movies and then TV. And the rest, they say, is history. Yeah. But I'm curious. So in 1926, because you would probably be the knowledgeable one, yes. uh, Gracie Allen, what was she well, doing then? She was, you know, she started, her father was a song and dance band in vaudeville. Mm -hmm. And they were, um, the whole family, there were five kids, and their whole family was part of the act. So Gracie, Gracie first stepped out on stage when she was three years old. So to Gracie, vaudeville was just, that's, that's what you did. Uh, and so she was doing, um, she was in an act with, uh, uh, she was two, one of two girls who were stooges for this uh, woman who was the headliner. And there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of physical comedy. Of course, you know, Gracie was just a, she was like five feet tall, 100 pounds or so. And the physical mm. comedy just got to be too much for her. Mm. So she said, you know, I'm going to quit this second. I'm going to find another partner and I'm going to do something that's not quite so physical, you know, taking Pratt Falls and all that kind of thing. Oh, okay. And um, at the same time, George Burns was breaking up with his vaudeville partner. So they said, uh, you know, let's uh, let's try to do an act together. Fantastic. That yeah. is such a great story. So that must be in reference to his disastrous but tenacious career that they make reference to right before yes. meeting Gracie. Yes. Well, he was, you know, in vaudeville every time you got fired from some theater or from some circuit because you were so bad. <laughs> you just reinvented yourself. You came up with a new name. Nobody used their real names in vaudeville. And he just went through all these acts. And he was, for 15 years, he was a song and dance man and not yeah. doing really well either. I mean, he was a great dancer, by the way. As you can see, maybe from some of their old... Um, they did some... Uh, they did one of their vaudeville acts, actually, on film. And um, he was just not successful as a song and dance man. And even though 
he was a funny guy off stage. It just it, he never thought about doing comedy. He thought of himself as a song and dance man. So hmm. he was unsuccessful at that for 15 years. And then when he tried <laughs> comedy, he became a big success. So there in comes the word tenacious. <laughs> well, yeah, really. I mean, you just he loved it so much. He loved performing so much. I mean, he started performing when he was eight in, in a <laughs> quartet or eight-year-old boys singing in a quartet. Mm. And to him, you know what? He would rather have been an unsuccessful vaudeville performer than a success at anything else. Mm, interesting. So he just stayed with it. And now you, too, possess those same qualities. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe you're a better dancer. Can we expect to no. see you dancing on stage at the Batavia Fine well, Arts Center? Well, I do I do dance a little bit. You know, we um, one of the highlights of the show is we recreate. You know, when you hit when you play the Palace Theater in New York, that's with mm. vaudeville. That's considered hitting it, hitting the big time. So we do a little bit of uh, we recreate their first night at the Palace Theater, and we actually, even though it's just me on stage, uh, we actually have a, a wonderful actress named Dee Dee Khan who does the voice of Gracie, and we it's just a voiceover that we hear. Um, at different times throughout the show. Um, I think maybe the audience might know Didi Khan from Gre- Frenchie in Greece. And uh, so we create some of the, we, re- we recreate some of their uh, vaudeville routines. We have a lot of film clips during yeah. the show. Multimedia, you're pulling Oh, yeah, here. yeah. We have, we have film clips from the television show, from their movies. Uh, we have a very funny one with, with George Burns and Jack Benny from uh, one of Jack Benny's shows a very funny comedy sketch. We have a lot of uh, uh, still photographs as well. So, yeah, it is a multimedia show. Now, this recount of George's life, is that true? We should start with who created this script. Right. Well, the show was written by Rupert Holmes. Um, it was uh, actually, it was commissioned by the, the Burns and Allen estate. They wanted, they wanted mm. somebody to do a one-man show of George. And uh, they thought Rupert was the right mm. person for it. I don't know if if you're familiar with the musical, uh, The Mystery of Edwin Drew. Oh, yes. Oh, Tony Award winning musical. Yeah, well, Rupert wrote that. Um, he also, even though he's not, a, he is a musician, but he's not a singer, but he did have a hit record in the 80s called Pina Colada. Why don't you which, sing that for us? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I don't know. It. I mean, if I heard it, I would say, oh, yeah, that's Pina Colada. But I don't, I don't really remember the song that well. But, you know, I think, I don't know, Rupert, he wrote it. And I think they were trying to, you know, they wanted somebody to record it. And I think at some point he just said, well, I'll just record it. And it became a big hit. I'll look that up later, listeners, and we'll we'll have to uh, take a listen on that one. I think yeah. I know the song, but I'm not sure, and I don't want to embarrass myself, so I'm not going to sing. <laughs> if you, I think it's like, if you like pina colada. I think that's how it goes, isn't it? I think so. That is how it goes. That is the song I have in mind. Yes. Um, but I have been known to embarrass myself in the past. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's Rupert's, that's like his only hit record. I mean, you know, he's, he, he's a writer. He doesn't think of himself as a performer at all, but he did have a hit single. That's interesting. So they got, they asked Rupert to write this script. And I mean, this script turned out so well that it was on Broadway about 10 years ago and it was nominated for a Tony Award for Best Play of that year. That, that is, is how Ohio. well written this script is. And it won the 2003-2004 National Broadway Theater Award for Best Play. And I think you might have had something to do with that. Well, no, I came on, uh, I didn't come on until 2008. Okay, you came on in two, but it's yeah. the same production that you're oh, going to yes, see. Oh, yes, we have, the, we have the, the, uh, the video, all the video and the sound clips that we use are from the Broadway production. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Boy, I'm intrigued now. Yeah. I might have to get my butt in a seat for that show coming up, and you're going to be at the Batavia Fine Arts Center oh, yeah. on beautiful, February 8th. Oh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful theater, too. I've been there before with, an, with another one-man show that I tour with, mm-hmm. and it is, it is a lovely venue. But I have to tell you, um, there are not a whole lot of tickets left. What a so, it's what a great testament though to the to the show. Yeah, um, um, hopefully a lot of the people who saw me in my I do a one man show called Humbug, which is a musical. <gasps> that was you. 
Oh yeah, my you, gosh, what a you, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> did you see that? I did. I was so moved. Oh. And I was skeptical. I have to tell you, when I first walked in the theater, I thought, how is one man going to pull this off? But I actually went through all of the emotions. <laughs> oh, Kimberly, <laughs> right that is fantastic. With it. it is. You, I'm so glad you saw that. Well, that you was, were, my, you were that was amazing. my first year during that show. No kidding. Well, you did an absolute phenomenal job. And I brought my daughter, who is also in theater. She's oh. she's actually performed on that stage. Wow. And she was blown away because we <laughs> really were skeptical. So I have to say, I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> uh, well, I, I hope it means that I'm versatile enough to play... Scrooge and George Burns. Well, it is indeed a huge compliment, and I'm for sure now even more intrigued to come out and see you perform this weekend. I know you said there's not a lot of tickets left, so folks, you're going to have to get in touch with the Batavia Fine Arts Center. I'm going to give you the phone number. It's 630-937-8934 if you want to catch this production. And I just have to ask, um, how Mm -hmm. important is it to you, especially now knowing that you performed Humbug, how important is it to preserve these stories and just carry them out on stage? Well, you know, I, I really am a big believer in knowing what has gone before me. Um, I know a lot of young actors, believe it or not, I, I was astonished. Uh, I talked to some young actors, maybe in their early or mid-20s last week, who had never heard of Henry Fonda. Mm. To me, that's, you know, and, they, and they're actors. They want to be actors. Mm. And to me, that is just, you've, if you're an actor, you've got to know what's gone on before you. And I just think that living in this world, I think that it's important, even if you're not a performer, to know what has happened in, in the arts, in history, in politics, because that's how you learn. And mm-hmm. um, my, favorite, um, my favorite story about that is, you know, of course we get mostly people over 40 coming to see the show, but we do get some people in their 20s and even in their teens. And after the show, I go out into the lobby and uh, because I have a CD uh, that uh, it's uh, Alan Safier sings the songs of George and Gracie's heyday that they sell in the lobby. And after the show, I go out and meet people and sign their CDs. And there was this one 16 year old boy came up to the table and he was so excited. He just discovered George Burns. He'd never heard of him before. And he was oh. telling the jokes back to me and all that. And, and as he walked away, my stage manager came over to me and he said that that boy you were just talking to, I saw him walking into the theater before the show started, being, you know, dragged there by his mother. And he said he looked like it was the last place on earth he oh. wanted to be. <laughs> but then it. he gets introduced to this incredible performer named George Burns. And in mm. 95 minutes, he absolutely falls in love with him. So, folks, for you out there wondering if you should be dragging your kids to some of these cultural events, these rich, deep, meaningful um, experiences, then the answer is yes, 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 you should be. So certainly uh, don't waste another minute and and embrace this opportunity to see the critically acclaimed one-man show with this really very, very talented actor. Thank you, Kimberly. Oh, well, like I said, not sure what what weight that carries, but I'll tell you, we were really impressed and we totally lost ourselves in that in that production. So I will look forward to seeing you, sir, Alan Safier, here uh, this weekend at the Batavia Fine Arts Center. Is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? No, I just I I just want to, you know, come prepared Hmm. to laugh and come prepared to cry because the show Hmm. travels the entire gamut of emotions in 95 minutes. And uh, if you do come, this is for you too, Kimberly. Uh, Stop by afterwards and and introduce yourself in the lobby and say hi to me. I will indeed. And I would love to get my picture with you. Oh, (laughs) no problem. You heard it here, folks. You all are my witnesses. So (laughs) As as my Southern audiences say, I'd like to have my picture made with you. Oh, yes, like my picture made. <laughs> so we'll have our picture made. <laughs> That'll be great. Well, I look forward to it. I will Me definitely too. make it a point to stop over. And it has been an absolute pleasure. I love coming to Chicago. They're great, great theater town. 
with great theater audiences. Oh, thank you. And, you know, living in this weather, we embrace this opportunity to escape and lose oh, ourselves. Well, in this a show great will show. make you feel very warm, I guarantee it. Oh, and I, if anybody can pull it off, I know you can, Alex. Thank you, so, Kimberly. Thank you. Have Thanks. a fantastic day. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for talking to me. All right, what a thrill. Take Thanks. care. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And, folks, that was Alan Safier. He is going to be the single soul performer for this one man amazing performance showing you the life of George Burns. It will unfold before your very eyes in 95 minutes. And I can tell you from personal experience with this particular actor who is extremely talented, you will not be disappointed. Uh, you can go to BataviaFineArtsCenter.org.